On Thursday, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission announced the death of the 19th panther in the state this year. The panther was hit by a car on I-75 near mile marker 103, not far from where I'm standing right now. It also marks the third panther to be killed by a vehicle in the last 10 days in Collier and Lee County. I'm Fox 4 meteorologist Andrew Shipley, and I spoke to the Center of Biological Diversity about what can be done to save our beloved panther. It's unfortunately, it seems to be the same story year after year. With this week's panther death, 15 of 19 deaths this year have come from vehicle strikes, and another came after a panther was hit by a train. Jason Tatoy, a senior attorney with the Center of Biological Diversity and a lifelong Florida resident, says these strikes are directly related to the growth we've seen in Southwest Florida. Some of the largest developments that are approved, in fact, when they're built out, upon build out, they add thousands of vehicle trips per day. And so when you have that much volume on the roadways, um, it just increases the risk uh, posed to, to this species. And this development is also decreasing the amount of habitat available to the panthers to roam. A male panther needs nearly 200 square miles just to live. And then in some places, particularly in Collier and Lee counties to, in, in South uh, West Florida, we're starting to see corridors um, that had naturally existed is starting to develop these pinch points or bottlenecks. And those pinch points are where the toy says panthers are more likely to be killed. But there are things that can help. One of those is a wildlife crossing that looks like this. Particularly when they're paired with things like directional fencing, reduced speed limits, um, and other such like controls or, or mechanisms on the roadways to reduce more, um, more um, mortalities. But it's, we can't just depend on crossings alone. Tatoy says if we're going to have any hope for the panther's recovery, we need to find a way to get the species out of South Florida. One solution, translocating females north of the Clusahatchee, as the river seems to be a bottleneck for the species to expand. Because it's, it's important with the, the wide range of these species to have females north so that males can disperse north and breed and for future generations. Despite the recent death, a ray of hope. FWC reporting a new litter of kittens, one male and two females earlier this month in Oakledge Hokley Lowell State Forest, giving the recovering species some hope. In Naples, meteorologist Andrew Shipley, Fox 4.